Well, welcome back to Read This Book. I'm Tim Johnson, Curator of Special Collections and Rare Books and the E.W. McDermott Curator of the Sherlock Holmes Collections for the University of Minnesota Libraries. And today with me, we have... I am Andre No. I'm the veterinary medical librarian on the St. Paul campus, and I've been there for about 11 years now. All right, and what did you bring today? Well, being a librarian, I could not restrict myself to just one. Of course. Uh, of course not. So the first one is uh, veterinary, animal related, and it is The Art of Raising a, Pumpy, a Puppy uh, by the Monks of New Skeet. It's kind of become a, a go-to, rather classic for new dog owners. Um, it's one of the first books that really kind of laid out positive reinforcement as opposed to negative reinforcement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the, the, the importance of really having um, good socialization with people and um, other dogs and so forth to really create a good family member. Why dogs in a monastic setting? I don't That's automatically put those two together. That's a good question, and I don't know their history behind it, um, but they've just become, you know, just a really well-known group, especially as it pertains to German Shepherds. That mm -hmm. seems to be the, the dominant breed that they have, and they just kind of, over the years, um, just really refined the way they um, uh, uh, breed mm -hmm. and, and raise just really well-adjusted dogs. And finally, they started putting it into print, uh, from requests of, of people that would buy some of their puppies. Okay. Yeah, for some reason I'm getting Bernese Mountain Dogs and St. Bernard's kind of in the same picture. I think maybe they've got some kind of a monastic history too, but I, I, I could be wrong. But yeah. it's a fascinating combination of monks and dogs. Yeah, and I guess for whatever reason I think, uh, you know, they might have a fair amount of time to devote <laughs> to something like that, yeah, yeah. unlike a, a lot of us that lead such such busy lives. So besides monks and dogs, what else have you got? Well, so you know, one thing in higher education that librarians get involved with, and especially medical librarians, is this idea of evidence-based medicine. We teach a lot about that, and that's kind of how to find good quality information, but the role that information and evidence takes um, in allowing clinicians to make decisions, right? And you know, when I think back about my own higher education, really it was about how to develop a really good BS detector, right? Mm -hmm. It kind of is, right? Mm -hmm. Critical thinking, decision making, right? Nowadays, I mean, it's such a paradigm shift once all this information went online that students now do really have to memorize anything when you can have quick access to it. It's unmediated. That's right. Yeah. So, so now it's it's more about you know how how are you how are you thinking and critically assessing some new situation and making decisions mm -hmm. to come at a certain outcome and it's been a very colorful political season as well with this idea of alternative facts mm -hmm. and what is a fact and what is truth versus fact and all these kind of conversations. Mm -hmm. So this book is by Richard Thaler. It's a 2015 book called Misbehaving, and it's really about the story about the genesis of behavioral economics. And certainly that seems to be a bit of a stretch from uh, veterinary medicine, but the reason behavioral economics I think is so interesting is because we all care about money. It's, it, there's so many fun examples uh, of how our thinking is flawed. And the more you can pick away at that, the more you can realize, you know what, maybe I really need to reflect on myself and how I make decisions, mm -hmm. general mm -hmm. decisions. Mm -hmm. So just as an example, when credit cards first came out, right, there, there was this idea of, if you give me cash, you'll get a discount, right? But you're gonna, we're gonna charge you a little bit more if mm -hmm. you use a credit card, mm -hmm. right? Companies wanted to recoup that extra cost, mm -hmm. right? So the question is, are you getting a cash discount or are you getting a surcharge with the card? Two very different ideas, right? So as you can guess, the, the, credit, uh, the gas companies wanted to call it a, a discount because that way people were more likely to use their card. Mm -hmm. If you call it a surcharge, people didn't want to use their credit cards, right? So just that kind of juxtaposition um, 
would change people's behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and another example that, that's really interesting is this idea of risk taking and being aversion to loss. Um, for example, if you had a hundred dollars or if you found a hundred dollars in your laundry, mm -hmm. right? So it would increase your happiness I'd by I'd be very X. happy. Yes. Aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you found it on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. right? So it would increase your happiness by X. But now if you accidentally lost a hundred dollars you knew you had in a pocket, it would be minus two X or so. The impact of loss is much larger mm -hmm. than gaining. Mm -hmm. So again, consider how that affects your various behaviors, especially if you're a blackjack player <laughs> or, or something perhaps, you know, just more um, how you consume goods. Mm -hmm. So we've got misbehaving and we've got the monks of New Skeety. Yep. A fascinating combination of things that you have brought to us today. Thanks, Andre. You're very welcome. And until next time, just read this book. Thanks for joining us.